Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. Uh, hope you're doing well. Um, Kay, can you hear me okay? Just want to make sure my settings are all fine and dandy. Yeah, hi, mate. Um, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, we can hear you well. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. Well done, Hammers. Yeah, at the highlight of my evening. <laughs> that was. Um, yeah, good result for us. Needed to uh, get one on the on the score sheet for this year because we haven't won a game. But uh, yeah, still a bit wobbly. But I'll take that uh, all day long, really. Uh, right, let's uh, get straight into it. Um, <clears throat> China. Okay. Some mixed uh, messages coming from those guys over there talking about Australia. They're on track to lift these wine tariffs finally uh, by the end of March, uh, according to uh, press over there, meeting of economic ministers there. Um, leading, as I say, to that lifting of tariffs, which has been touted for quite some time. However, um, China's Ministry of Commerce dropped in a line saying that they hope Australia pays attention to and actively promotes the resolution of specific problems encountered by Chinese enterprises in Australia. So uh, a thinly veiled bit of uh, advice there that uh, if they're going to raise these or lift these tariffs uh, Australia needs to uh, do a bit themselves so uh, maybe not quite at the end of this story um, a date for your calendar as well early March next week um, China on the 4th of March is starting its two sessions meeting this is all the top brass in the Communist Party getting together for a shindig uh, where some significant uh, policy changes or announcements could be made um, so we need to keep an eye on that uh, in case they come up with uh, some bazookas to do with the economy next week so that will be uh, keenly watched uh, over in Japan we got that all important inflation data and it was stickier than expected in pretty much all the metrics uh, the National CPI there coming at 2.2% was expected to also drop to 1.9%. So that beat expectations. The core number there as well, beating expectations. Um, also the core core, fresh food and energy uh, came in at 3.5 versus 3.3 expected down from the 3.7 previously. So all show lower inflation than last month, but all beat expectations. Um, so it keeps it in the sticky category for that. Finance Minister Suzuki says they want to closely look at CPI. So uh, probably needs to uh, get a magnifying glass then. Um, but good numbers there. It keeps the uh, box half ticked for the BOJ um, if uh, and the government as well. If they can keep those numbers above 2%, that will further... Uh, enable the BOJ at least to, to mainly tick its inflation box if they can turn around the negative Q4 growth uh, over there in Q1 that'll be another box ticked for the government and if they get these wage negotiations uh, coming in as we've seen last week uh, higher than last year wage deals that'll be the third box ticked for them and uh, then it should be all green lights for the BOJ okay you saw the data, is up for the data? Yeah, I saw it. Um, well, I'd say normal reaction. Um, yeah, I, okay, it's a bit higher than, than, than expected. And, and we are holding the <clears throat> the two um, the two percent line, which uh, should be supporting the UEDA's uh, plans. Um, and now we are back to watching uh, watching those wages. Um, the good thing is, though, that um, even with with CPI a bit lower, if they get decent wages, that's going to be um, pushing the the real wages up, which uh, which may be an additional uh, an additional uh, uh, good thing for for them to be able to raise rates. And we have the um, Nikkei and um, and the topics uh, mainly, they they weren't overly impressed. Um, they well, they didn't take the stickier print as a as a negative. We've seen both um, both. Sorry, indices are still um, trading a bit higher. And uh, on the other hand, it's um, yeah, you're showing yeah, where well, you were just showing the um, the two year yields, right? 
Um, they they pushed up a little, but the um, the longer term ten year JGBs hasn't uh, moved at all really. Um, they um, they are just waiting for that. That that's still a signal that they don't expect uh, a really uh, a very long um, hiking cycle. But yeah, the two years are, are pushed back to to um, to a bit uh, better level. So that's uh, I guess it's it's what the market is looking at now. Uh, comparing comparing it to the two year U.S. yields also being relatively close to where the Fed expectations are. Um, that that is likely what the market is now trading. Um, and 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 I may say perhaps that that it is more the foreign market trading it than than, than the Japanese themselves, but um, yeah, that is uh, that is clearly a positive sign as well um, that they those yields are ticking up. Um, I'd say just um, keep the course. My my base case hasn't changed. I still think they will wait for those wages. Which makes the March meeting a bit too close to any uh, um, decisive results. But uh, so my base case will still be April because it's also much more, um, how should I say, much more convenient to do it in uh, at the start of a new fiscal year as well. Yeah, and uh, could it be a case that they actually tear up in April for that uh, for the following meeting? Oh, it could be. Uh, that that that. Yeah, it 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 absolutely could. Um, they they may say Ueda may say something about something like um, uh, we have, we have taken the the yields to zero and we are pleasantly surprised by uh, wages and stuff. And then uh, it, they're Japanese, right? They won't hang it in. Uh, they won't hang it there. Uh, everything out to dry. They uh, we've seen uh, all those. Uh, people at the at the BOJ and the government and the MOF and and they, they're still talking a Japanese language. They are not going to come out saying like, oh yeah, we're going to raise uh, three, four, five times. They don't. They actually don't have um, anything that is comparable to to the dot plots or the um, um, the in, more in detail ECB uh, projections and stuff. So they they do have. This, but it's very, it's very much, um, it, it's less precise, right? So um, yeah. they are never going to tell us like, uh, yeah, we're going to raise the yields to half a percent or one percent. Um, but they, they may do several. Um, act, they, they may take several actions at the same time, taking it to zero, officially abandon YCC, um, uh, telling the market that they won't, uh, that, that they, even if they haven't bought any. ETFs and, and rates in the uh, in the past months, they may officially call the program uh, to an end as well. And and there, there there are several possibilities, little things they can do, which in the facts won't change much, but will signal send some signals to the market that they are serious about taking uh, rates into positive uh, territory. Yeah, and uh, Horatio asked what happens after the BOJ ends native rates. But that's all they do with uh, the yen weaken after initially strengthening. I mean, that's the that's a discussion we've had all the way through this. You know, yes, we're going to get a reaction when they finally, if they finally end uh, negative rates. But then the question is going to be, are they going to enter into a hike cycle? Are they going to say we're going to hike 10 pips each month? Unlikely. They're going to take it very slow and steady. So it really is a question of whether the market gets overly hawkish about what they're doing um, as opposed to what they will do, which is still like to be very slow and steady. Um, so if everyone's in line with that, yeah, we probably get uh, a bit of a buy rumor, sell fact situation. We get initial reaction in the yen, um, but if they're not indicating a, a big long path of hiking, um, then yeah, probably uh, the yen weakens again, and we're back to watching the data. So that's that will be the important question after we get what uh, they decide to do. That's going to be the that's going to be the yeah. next trend for the yen. I think the next real yeah. trend for the yen. I think. Yeah, and and for the time being, the expectations. Well, th those are very rough expectations. You don't hang your head onto those expectations. But for the time being. Um, <laughs> We are like uh, when I read uh, market participants, they think that it's possible, plausible that they take the rates up to somewhere 
around 30 BPs or 35 BPs, which would still be very much below uh, what other major central banks are um, having right now as uh, as rates. So um, if you take that as a guide um, for, for expectations, that means that they may rather go with 10 or 15 BPs hikes than than what the uh, major central banks have been doing uh, 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 with with 25 BPs um, hikes in the whole cycle. But uh, as I said, mechanically, there, there should be some yen buying because people will need to manage books, you know, asset managers, um, the Japanese whales, um, you, you name it. People have models uh, based on which they take positions. Um, and... If your model says that when when Japanese yields are at zero um, or, or at minus 10 BPs, uh, but if you know the minus 10 BPs have always been just for a limited amount of uh, of extra reserves, right? The the, the yeah. real rates have never really been below um, uh, zero. But um, uh, if if you take that as a guide, there will be um, books to manage. So you may see a mechanical effect on on the yen at first, but then. If you look at the aftermath of, uh, of if you look already beyond it, um, it, it may be a case of um, just one move in the yen, and then we we need to reassess. Um, I'm not sure if if they really go on a slow, slow pace, and and if you if they don't get really good GDP numbers, that is going to be a, a very long or broad based yen strength for for a longer time. I'm still not convinced about it. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Well, we'll get to find out what they're going to do uh, over the days and weeks ahead, no doubt. Um, over in the UK, uh, we had a little bit of data out um, from the CBI, uh, Retail Distributive Trade Data, uh, that was out uh, yesterday while we were on the show. If I can find it. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Oh, lost it. Oh, my clock's all over the shop. Oh, I've had a nightmare. There we go. So this is for the retail sector. Um, coming in at a healthy minus 7 versus uh, minus 33. Uh, expected better than the minus 50 prior. So uh, less uh, pessimistic there. Um, total sales uh, actually came in higher at uh, plus 5 versus uh, also previous uh, minus 33. Now, the quarterly reported selling price numbers came in at up 54 versus up 73. So for the quarter, that's Q4. Um, some better data for the BOE, some lower retail selling prices. So a bit of an inflationary, uh, disinflationary move in that. Um, on the uh, retail inflation front, uh, Kentar was out with its latest report showing grocery price inflation was up 5.3% versus 68 previously in the four weeks to February 18th. So again, a bit more disinflation coming in there, lower inflation, shall we say. Um, so that's also helping retailers. Um, Germany, GFK consumer confidence uh, came in at minus 29. Um, that was uh, overnight as well. Uh, you can see there, matching pretty much expectations, a little bit better than the minus 29.6 seen in February, but still very, very poor numbers. Um, Bloomberg's been out with a piece as well on Germany saying that uh, the commercial real estate problems could be bigger in Germany than actually in the US um, because uh, they're heading to what they call a slow motion property crash, uh, which is going to be a big looming issue for banks. Um, so they highlight uh, a bit of data there, a bit of a, Zero hedge sounding headline from those guys, but so maybe something to keep an eye on. Um, more ECB bods popping up. Uh, ECB Stornos again saying the ECB has to deal with more difficult problems than the Fed. Uh, then he repeated that he sees a first rate cut in June and um, says we still want to see further progress. Uh, we still have negotiated wages at 4%. Uh, and we won't have concrete wage evidence, i.e., lower wages uh, until April. So that's when he's kicking the can till for his decision on rates. Um, ECB's Lagarde uh, was speaking in uh, Canal Z saying the ECB is not there yet on inflation. Then she was speaking later on in Parliament. It was on the 
ECB annual report. Uh, not uh, many, uh, well, very few comments of note. Um, she did say there are increasing signs of a bottoming out in growth and some forward looking indicators point to a pickup later. Um, as I say, that was talking about the uh, annual report from the ECB, so a load of uh, historical waffle. Um, over in the US, we had new home sales, uh, which came in higher than last month, but uh, missed expectations. Um, but uh, nothing really to worry about there. Sale prices uh, came in at 400, uh, just under 421,000. Uh, that was down 2.6% from the same time last year. So a little bit of a, a drop off. Um, bubbly prices rose over last month anyway. A uh, couple of auctions uh, went by pretty much without a fuss. Uh, two year, five year, and those little bits in between. No real, uh, as I say, no real earthquakes in those numbers. So we keep uh, moving on to the next one. Um, anything uh, out of those you picked out, Kay? No, 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 no. Just a uh, cool. bit of a mix, uh, mixed bag, as you say. Uh, got another one coming up today, I think, the seventh year. Um, yeah. But if it goes the same way, uh, I, I don't expect uh, too much uh, to take away. But I mean, somewhere, the, the good news for um, the Treasury uh, is that it got absorbed uh, relatively well um, in, in various, uh, uh, to various degrees. But uh, it, it, there, there has been absolutely no dramas uh, in anything. They, they didn't have any difficulties to find, uh, to find the funding. Yeah. I mean, do you think that uh, the state of the economy is helping with these auctions as well? You know, there's no uh, there's no big risks shining on any, waving any flags in the US at the moment. Uh, so that would encourage investors to to effectively invest yeah. by lending the government money. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's a, probably a, a part of it as well. Yeah. Um... No, and, and on the other hand, it also testified that there's still not, uh, enough money in the system. So, yeah, um, yeah somewhere it's, uh, well, I mean, yeah, as, as you say, there's no red flags, orange flags. Uh, um, I, I thought that there was a bit of a risk that uh, at least the bond sharks would make them pay up for it. And that we saw on the back of it a bit of a spike in those, uh, in, in the yields that then settled on afterwards. But um uh, yeah, it does seem the market is relatively relaxed to give uh, to give the the treasury uh, their cash. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Fed uh, Schmidt said there's no need to preemptively adjust the policy. Uh, we should be patient and wait for convincing evidence. Uh, so the Fed may need to cool demand further to tame price pressures. That's uh, a little uh, bit of the higher for longer message there. Um, likely need moderating wage growth uh, to hit the 2% inflation target. Um, we're back to doing uh, the old dance again in uh, US politics. Uh, we've got the potential for a partial shutdown uh, early in March, uh, beginning of March. Um, the bods over there are uh, doing their latest uh, arguing over passing various bills and whatnot, uh, which uh, if they don't, get through we could see a partial shutdown um so that's coming up again likely be a can kick um especially being this uh election year no one wants to be uh, blamed for shutting down the government or partially shutting down the government um this it's been fairly quiet on this front though we haven't had the the flood of headlines that we usually get um but just keep an eye on it because it's it's often when you're not expecting something um, or the market's not really looking at something that something like a shutdown will actually happen. Uh, whereas previously, when everyone was getting worried about it, we knew the can would get kicked and kicked it did. So uh, just keep an eye on this one. Just one of those funny things that can happen out again. Um, Fitch wrote a little inflationary piece uh, talking about uh, what's going up uh, in shipping with the Red Sea saga and whatnot. They say shipping costs could add as uh, almost 0.5 percentage points to core inflation numbers. And um, that's something that uh, the ECB and uh, those in Europe are speaking about uh, uh, quite uh, recently, because obviously it more affects uh, the transit into the Med and trade there than elsewhere. Um, 
we've had the uh, CEO of JP Morgan, uh, Jamie Diamond, saying that if rates go up when we have a recession, there will be real estate problems. Uh, well, I don't know if he's uh, a little bit late to that one because that's what a lot of people are looking at already, but uh, he's just uh, bringing a bit more colour to that. Uh, that's all I've got for today or for yesterday on the headline front. Uh, any bits and bobs from UK? Uh, nothing more. Um, no, no, no. Uh, I think, uh, again, uh, relatively quiet um, overnight session. By, by the way, this this uh, this, this government uh, partial shutdown risk and stuff, I thought the, the spending limits were, were suspended until the 1st of January 2025, isn't it? Um, um, or is it only bickering about extra spending that they are doing over there and then uh, threatening to shut shut everything down uh, over there. I'm, I'm not sure. It, it's, it's only a partial shutdown, so it's probably just one specific mm. area. Maybe they didn't uh, kick the can far enough on it last time. So I don't think it's the, the broader whole spending thing, uh, but who knows what mess these lot get into over there. Um, I have enough trouble keeping up to, to speed what my lot are doing, let alone mm. that lot doing. Um, right. Yeah, maybe, Brian, you can uh, let us know what's going on over there mm. in this partial shutdown. You can bring yeah. us a bit of news for a change. <laughs> okay. Um, just taking Dimitri's uh, comment uh, on the Riggs Bank. Yeah, the, the Riggs Bank have been saying that they, they can cut before the ECB. Um, they already said that, I think, last week or, the, or even the week before. Um, the thing is, though, with uh, with uh, Swedish kroner, and I'm not sure for how long it will last, but I think there's a bit of a bit of geopolitical bid um, right now on the, on the Swedish kroner more than more than economical, since the Sweden has uh, has received the green light to join uh, NATO, right? So um, I'm not sure for how long it will last, but uh, perhaps there is a bit of um, of that positiveness uh, um, in in the Swedish corner right now, but I do think that sooner or later uh, economics will will take over, and especially we know that uh, Swedish corner is a um, bit of a risk currency as well. It is the um, it is at at best of times or or sometimes it is the the accelerated euro because the European uh, um, the eurozone is is their biggest trading partner, so. Um, if things go turn sour or better in the eurozone, um, you will likely see the Swedish kroner react to it uh, to it as well. So um, that is something that if you want to trade Swedish kroner, you have to always bear in mind is that proximity with the eurozone and um, the uh, dependent on on risk uh, as well. If you and I'm not saying it's going to happen, far from. But if, if for instance, equity markets start to turn around and, and, and drop, um, Swedish Corona is likely not to strengthen, but but on the contrary, weaken a little bit. So uh, that's for a bit of background on the Swedish Corona. Yep, thank you very much, mate. Um, so we've got uh, a few bits and bobs of data coming out later today. Uh, we've got the uh, S&P, Case Shiller, FHFA, house price data. So we'll see if there's anything coming out from that house prices have been uh, pretty resilient so uh, there's been no worries from there but we'll see if any start creeping in um the conference board consumer confidence number later on today um that will be uh, probably the biggest data point to watch this afternoon or for the day we'll, we'll see uh, how the consumers getting on particularly after that uh, pretty soggy retails number um and also keep an eye on those inflation expectation numbers as well and then we get some more regional bits and bobs, uh, manufacturing services and what not there. Um, right, let's uh, have a look at some prices. Um, we'll kick off with dollar yen. Let's just uh, zoom it in a bit so we can see what's going on. So 150.80 proving yet again another tough nut up here. Um, shows that uh, in this falling volatility market at the moment uh, the bigger levels are still holding firm um, that means we're potentially heading for a test of 150 this sort of area 150 149.70s um, is pretty much the zone to keep an eye on now obviously yen a little bit bid 
um, probably on the back of that uh, inflation data, but maybe not uh, as strong as you might expect uh, if we're ticking boxes for the BOJ to uh, start ending easing. Um, but we have to reflect on the fact that, you know, we've done a lot of expectation trading already, um, you know, coming into the latter part of the year. You know, everyone was getting a bit uh, excited about the BOJ and uh, we had a bit of trading there. And we had the bounce. So I think the market is pretty balanced at the moment over what uh, where the BOJ sit. Um, as we've been saying, we're probably looking for a bit of a confirmation move if and when they actually do it. And then we'll see what happens with all the whales and whatnot uh, and other investors. But, uh, you know, the way the market has been piling into Japan at the moment, it seems like a foregone conclusion, which is uh, then shows us where the large balance of risk lies, is if the BOJ don't end up ending easing. Uh, there's going to be uh, who hits fan, I think, uh, is going to be the same for that one. Uh, so for now, range trading, Vols a little bit quiet again today. We're trading around the uh, 7.5% mark. Um, it's been sailing up towards the 8% mark, over 8% for a while. But uh, those vols are coming down as well. So pick your levels, stick to your ranges. Um, at the moment, it looks like uh, we might be 150, 149.70s up to 150.80s. Uh, so that's going to be your ballpark for that one. I'll let Kay look at uh, maybe some of the crosses in a mo. Uh, Euro dollar was on the creep this morning. Um, another one on go slow. Looking like we might be getting up towards a test. Of 108 uh, 70 is the top of my zone. Maybe we get a little push out again, get up, uh, put in a test of 109s, but uh, it's snail's pace at the moment. Uh, we couldn't manage that. We've pulled back a little bit. Um, we're still keeping the trend going, but you know, this is uh, what now nearly uh, half a month to do uh, <laughs> to do 160 pips, 150 pips. So, yeah, very slow at the moment. Again, vols there. Very low, 5.6%, um, sticking more well below that 6% mark at the moment. So, again, intraday, it doesn't give you an awful lot, you know, when you get in 20, 30 pit ranges. But we know where the levels are, up towards here, the highs, up towards that 109 area. So, maybe if we get a test up there, I think there's going to be uh, a few people were uh, already indicating they're queuing up uh, up there. Kay, you're one of those, aren't you, queuing up around that 109 area? Yeah, we'll see where we end up the, uh, at the end of the month. Um, queuing up, I'm I'm actually not in the queue right now, right now, but I will see where we end uh, where we end the month. Um, perhaps a good time to to repeat that most of the models are um, looking for uh, for um, reasonable or mild or or, or dollar sales um, on the back of equity moves um, again this month. Um, so they may be. Uh, tomorrow, the day after, maybe a bit of a more pressure to the top side on stuff like euro dollar uh, or or cable or um, commodity currencies or so, and uh, and then we will see where we end uh, where we end the month, um, and and then we'll see what uh, what in the meantime because we've got uh, inflation data coming for the eurozone as well, and uh, that is I think the Germans are coming out. Is it on? Thursday or, or tomorrow? Yeah, Thursday. Th Thursday, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Thursday, so that's the last yeah. day of the month. That could be um, could be a very good indication as well. And, and we've got the French as well, Spanish. Um, so that's going to be a very good indication right at the end of the month to see uh, whether it's going to be a case of uh, hitting a rally in the euro or not. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. For the time being, I'm 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 really uh, watching the game and uh, and and see what happens. But my my overall bias would still be right now uh, to um, to sell rallies on this on this one. Um, but I'm I'm I'll wait where we where we end up. Yeah, very much so. Um, you should also keep an eye out tonight for the RBNZ if you're trading Kiwi and the like. Um, I'm going to be having a little. Uh, Keep an eye on uh, Aussie Kiwi. I think this might be a good one for uh, if they do hike and you get a reaction. Um, I think uh, maybe somewhere down in that uh, 105 zone, down towards these lows as well. Uh, might I'm going to be looking at that. Maybe leave a couple of orders in for a little bit of a fade trade. Because um, if if they do hike, I can't see them going on a on a hike spree. Um, so again, it might be 
we need a confirmation move or we get a confirmation move and then maybe we start going the other way. So I'm, I'm going to be looking at that one. Um, Aussie dollar. Um, we got another zone in play down here that's uh, been on my chart for ages. Um, it was resistance. Now it's support. So down into this uh, 6520 area. Um, need to see now if we're going to start holding the top of the zone. Uh, if we do, again, it just keeps this uptrend in play and maybe then we get to have another look at these highs again. But uh, in the wider picture, it's it's this is a thing with the Aussie dollar. It, it looks like it's doing something, but then you look at it in the wider context and it's not really doing an awful lot at all. Um, so unless it's getting itself into the 66s and pushing up, um, we can't rule out that we see a move back down to the lows and maybe the trend just continuing. Um, but it's making the small steps. It's taking a while. It's making the small steps. So holding this zone above this zone would be a little bit of a, a bullish indication that maybe we'll finally get a move up towards the 66s. Um, Marcus, uh, I'll let Kay have a look at uh, EuroCAD if he wants to do. Um, as for your question on the Dixie, not doing an awful lot. Um do a little exercise, overlay the euro dollar chart onto your Dixie chart uh, and then see which one is the uh, most influential regarding uh, the Dixie. Uh, gold, oh, look at that, 2030s. Um, Antonio is looking at that one. Got any uh, ideas for this, Antonio? Because um, at the moment for me, again, it's bang in the middle of the uh, old ranges. This is where we keep coming back to uh, and looking at Let's have them then, Antonio. Let's give us your ideas. Let's uh, give us something to talk about. Um, but for me, yeah, it's it's in the middle. Um, so unless we see if we get another test of this uh, 2010, 2000 area, see how that wants to perform. If we get a move down there and that holds, that will cement this low that we got uh, 1986s, 85s. Um, and then we either sit in the middle or maybe we go for a little mooch up towards the high side. Um, but also we could just have a little look up there anyway. Um, keep an eye on this uh, this Israel situation, the Red Sea situation. If that calms down, that could see a little bit uh, of selling coming in, just a bit of the risk factor coming out of the gold trade. So that, that's about the only thing I can see why we'd get some, some decent downside uh, in gold at the moment. But while we've got that risk factor, I'm not expecting to see gold coming off uh, too far, but uh, I might be interested in a, a little short up here towards these highs, uh, depending on the reason we get there, of course. Uh, Kate, yep. do you want to have a little watches? Yep. Let me um, go uh, Brands way first uh, on the cable. Um, I've uh, I've said this morning in the in the room. Um, we have rejected several times yeah, the move um, up, up around 27, 27, 10. Uh, there's a bit of uh, uh, resistance as well, 27, 20. And then we've got a bit of a, uh, a bit of a shallow triangle here coming in higher up. You know, the, the, at the end of the month, I, I, I always like to trade with the clock in my hand, right? Um, we we know um, about the models, what they're calling for mild uh, mild dollar selling, which if you look at it based on what equities have done, would be um, the logic again. But today we are trading value data end of month, so there's there's always this uncertainty about what the US corporates uh, may or may not have to do. The past few months they have been extremely quiet on 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 this day. Uh, but we never can uh, rule it out. So I think you, you look at it. This is a bit fragile. This this trend line. I'm, I I wouldn't even take it too much into account. Comes in around one twenty four and a half. But then just below, we have already a few um, a, a bit of a better um, area to to uh, lean against. If it would come down to one twenty low one twenty six is one twenty six thirty five. Uh, even more so around 126.10, uh, 125.90, uh, if those uh, US corporates would uh, would need to buy dollars today, I would um, perhaps give it a go and, and try the long side for uh, for a little walk higher into, into the month end. Um, data in, uh, in, in the UK are not, not really uh, too bad, so I'd say... Um, 
it's a, it's a possibility if we if we get those uh, those levels here below to to see a, a little move higher again. Of course, if we start to to break one twenty six, uh, oh sorry, one twenty seven, one twenty seven ten, um, yeah, one twenty seven twenty, but but we have crossed it so so often. I would say uh, uh, look rather around what's happening in 127, 30, 40 zone. And if that would start to go, then I think we are going for a, for, for a higher close of, uh, of the month. Okay, These are some of the um, levels that I'm watching and the possibility of perhaps uh, doing something. Um, on the Kiwi then, yeah. On the Aussie, I've got exactly, we, we've, everybody's got exactly that same picture, right? We, we're all looking at that 65, 20, 25. Um, uh, it had a pretty decent bounce of it, I think, uh, linked to that, uh, to that perhaps outlook that China may give up those, those tariffs. But um, let's see uh, what's, uh, what's developing towards the end of the month, because uh, also don't forget that we, we rejected, uh, we didn't even go for a look above 66 and we rejected it pretty pretty quickly. So um, um, that one could be a bit of a mover. And as well, next night, we have that uh, weighted mean CPI out. If there's nothing else to look for in uh, in the Aussie, that may be small mover, but it's going to be overshadowed by what's happening in uh, on the RBNZ side. So RBNZ, um, they are... Um, there's two possibilities, and it's a, it's a fine line, okay? The majority thinks that they are going to keep the rate still and we are going to get a, a hawkish um, state, a hawkish press conference, hawkish um, um, or um, Governor or afterwards. By the way, he's speaking a lot of times over the, over the next 24 to 48 hours, uh, apparently. So um, um, then watch out for potential saloon doors in the Kiwi uh, um, during his interventions. But basically, we we are. Um, I told you about this zone, right? Forty sixty five on the on the Kiwi a, a good number of times. Um, it's been trading in that zone, and we can hardly pin it down to to one price. It's not sixty sixty five. It's 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 not fifty fifty five. It's 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 just this whole zone, right? And this is what uh, the, the zone that we need to watch uh, going into the to the RBNZ. The market is going into the in, is going into the me meeting low because they they do expect, um, as I said, either a hike or or a very hawkish uh, halt. All right. The problem I see here is that if those speculators that hope for a, for a hike don't get it, the hour between the the statement and the uh, and Or's press conference, we may see some people leave uh, leave the boat and then re put them put put the trades back on again uh, once once or is is coming out very hawkish or so but i think today uh, looking at how it's traded looking at how kiwi also traded again uh, uh, versus uh, uh, other uh, currencies than the dollar i think the immediate risk is for a bit of a disappointment that's a surprise trade that's the disappointment trade is a bit of a, of the surprise trade okay and and i this would be a bigger mover, I think. Then, but if they effectively hike, then of course um, those longs will uh, will get a lot of uh, uh, confidence and probably take it through, or at least go for a decent test of those prior highs. And I think the the, the big zone here uh, on the top side is going to be around. Uh, we've got a bit of confluence here around 6240s. If if that uh, would be seen, then we need to uh, we need to watch out what's uh, what the market is going to do here. Also, don't forget those models end of month and stuff. Uh, it could be that if they effectively hike and and all remains hawkish, that we really go for a ride on the uh, on the kiwi. Okay, so there's there's a couple of scenarios there. Um, as I said, the disappointment trade is 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 for nothing and or actually. Remaining relatively neutral, the uh, the hawkish trade is is an effective hike. The uh, more neutral trade uh, to me would be um, hold and then uh, uh, or remaining uh, remaining hawkish. Okay, then we we are probably going to have a few saloon doors and then um, drift around here or perhaps slightly 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 continuing the um, the kiwi's path. 
There's a couple of other things that are interesting on the Kiwi crosses. And look what happened here. Uh, and that was yesterday and on um, since last week. We have been trying to um, to test. Uh, we had several tests of this uh, support line here, of the triangle in uh, in uh, Euro Kiwi. Okay, and it held right. So now we are back in the middle of uh, in the middle of the park, and um, this is one that could actually, and it's a very volatile one as well. But one cannot forget that the Kiwi market has not the same liquidity as markets like Euro Dollar Dollar Yen or Cable. Right, so be. Be, be aware of that. The, the, the Kiwi can move around a lot. Um, so this one is going to be interesting. Imagine that uh, we get a bit of a hawkish one and we are going for a retest here and it holds again. That means that the market is probably a bit too long Kiwi and we, we could see a reversal and, and, and get back higher. If we get a very disappointing um, RBNZ, I reckon that we are going uh, for a retest of, of this. This is going to be toast pretty quickly. And we, we may be in for a retest of this prior high here, where we also have a confluence of uh, of, uh, of FIBs and, and resistance levels. OK, um, so back into the one, uh, 178 um, area. And then we have to talk about the end, right? After the, um, after the uh, CPI couple of uh, pairs here and um, this one could really be uh, getting a double whammy the kiwi yen okay we know that it's broken those those old time resistances and everything and it's 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 really been on a tear we have been coming back a bit also after the um cpi overnight and now we are here okay so this is the 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 levels that broke um the top line of this, this wedge is coming in around 92, 30, 35 going into um going into the RBNZ. And also look, the conversion line on the on for the uh, daily cloud is also coming in there. So that I reckon the Japanese are going to to keep an eye on 9230 on the on the Kiwi okay. If ever there is a reason, uh enough of a reason to um hang on a minute. Um, if there is enough of a reason to uh, to take it back down there, I think uh, we we could be very quickly down back to uh, 90, 91 and a half, uh, around ninety one forty or so. Um, this is uh, in turn if really the Kiwi gets uh, gets a beating, and that's quite a bit away, and that's more than two percent away. Um, but this is going to be a very very big zone. Everything around ninety, okay very very big psychological zone if everything but uh, uh as i said it's far away but keep just keep it in mind and a lot is converging to uh 90 the big figure in uh in kiwi and okay so uh that is one to really uh mark there in your um uh, on your charts that if ever we get back down there it's going to be very big decision time um, another one is Kiwi Yen. It's not um, Aussie Yen. It's not as it's not as clear as um, what what what's going on with Kiwi Yen. But we did have a bit of a break here above a, above a trend line. We run the retest. But um, worth worth to note is that we having trouble to keep those prior highs. Yeah, we have this double top here around ninety eight. 6570 and we're back trading just below so we may be in for a little bit of a um i don't like it anymore or i want to take uh, profits okay um that will that will mostly depend on on the yen i think all right if if this uh, level here low 98s are already holding then we probably are going to be uh, uh, moving very closer to to ninety nine or hundred at one at one stage, all right. But um, I'd say this is one when you want to keep when you want to keep away from stuff that's really at risk. Uh, this one could be one you uh, you can keep an eye on. Um, I am just going to update you what uh, with what's happening in the rand because it's it's one that I'm really watching very closely. Um, we've we've rejected well rejected people are taking profit and I think it's it's something uh, some, some has to do with probably month end some has to do with uh, the importance of that um, of that zone here as well 
I've moved out of what I've what I've uh, had left this morning, and I will pick it up again. Um, but I will wait for month end to to be over unless I get some really uh, news on the, on the, out of South Africa. So I'm still I'm still going to be interested in in, in buying dips. But in the meantime, I'm uh, putting this uh, this a little bit in the fridge and wait for what's uh, uh, happening next. What is the um, Hi, good morning or afternoon. You're long at the Aussie. Well, you're you're Aussie. You're you we we said yeah. Your um your uh, risk zone is uh, is uh, sixty five twenty twenty five. Uh, you're long on dollar yen. Well, uh, I hope you saw the uh, the CPI coming out. Um, your one fifty eleven is I to me at least a little close to. Uh, where um, the levels are, as as what I uh, what I showed, um, dollar cat, no idea. Um, yeah, euro sterling is just in the middle of the of the range as well. You can, uh, yeah, I, you know what? Perhaps it's it's not a too bad one going into uh, the end of month again. Uh, looking at sterling, perhaps, but uh, I. Fundamentally, I don't see too much uh, supporting any side right now on the euro sterling. We're in the middle of the in the middle of the park. Okay, now that's um, what I had today. Um, Antonio, Bitcoin, no idea. Um, the da the DAX, I haven't looked at it. Do you want to look at the DAX, uh, Ryan? Uh, no, I think we we can call that a day for today. Sure, mate. Just looking at uh, looking at the clock. Uh, we can surely have a look at uh, the DAX tomorrow. If you want to catch it quickly now before we uh, close up shop. So, were you talking to me? Uh, yeah, there's no one else there. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what? I'm 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 very seldomly looking at the DAX. It's still very strong. Um, it, it's 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 just I think. One big pot of net. The bond market, the equity markets. You you look at them. They they are moving in uh, in tandem. You you know what the S and P or the or the or the Dow is doing, and you will know what the DAX is doing really. And that that's that's really how uh, how I uh, look at the markets in in general right now. But uh, we we've broken those prior tops. Yeah, you have that trend line there. Uh, it's it still beat uh, for as long as it's it's above seventeen uh, seventeen hundred. Right? Yeah, we've got to do uh, a bit of work here, the same as what we've had to do with the S&P. Um, you know, find out where the support and resistance is going to come in. At the moment, there's no real signs of uh, where the support and resistance is going to be in this move. Um, obviously, the trend line may be your first area, but uh, you've probably got to do a bit of uh, price discovery, a bit of uh, drawing and redrawing of your charts just until the levels show up for themselves. Uh, but anyway, we shall call that a session for today. Uh, good luck uh, with all your trading today and this week. Um, stay safe out there. Thank you, Kay, for all your uh, wonderful artistry on the charts. And we shall catch you all tomorrow. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.